Cost Cutters is your family's full-service salon specializing in cuts, colors, and curls. Visit any one of our professional stylists today and get the look you want for less. Well, welcome everybody. This is Dr. Stephen West, Superintendent of Winona Area Public Schools. I want to welcome everybody to Making a Grade. To my immediate left, I'm really excited. Uh, this young lady, uh, when I first met her, uh, she really put the full court press on me to help our, our students at Winona Senior High School. This is Tegan, like rhymes like Megan, yep. Tegan Leckler, right? Yes. Okay. Um, Tegan did some amazing things for us. She took on a project to help get the uh, intersection safe. She and uh, some friends of hers uh, and really put us, uh, forced us to really pay a close attention to the safety of our children out and on that uh, Sarnia <laughs> Road Gilmore there. Right. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about it. Like, how did that all start for you? Well, first of all, before we even do that, yes. let's, let's say hello to Winona. Tell us who you are, what year you are. Let people know who you, who you are. All right. Hello. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tegan. I'm a senior at Winona Senior High School. Mm -hmm. um, you got plans? All I right. do have plans. Next headed? year, I'm going to be attending the University of Minnesota, Twin Cities. Go for it. Yeah. Right. And uh, okay. majoring in political science. That was my minor. Oh, really? Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's the plan so far. Excellent. So, Excellent. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now let's get to it. So this beautiful uh, project that you guys brought mm -hmm. to me uh, kind of started. I think you guys were going around talking to the city folks, talking right. with the county. Mm -hmm. what, what led you to it? Um, well, there's a lot of people between, you know, me, teachers I'd heard, parents, mm -hmm. my friends, just different people that I'd been in communication with um, that have been complaining about that intersection, you know, mm -hmm. at like 8.30 when you're coming into school, 3.30 when you're leaving from school. Um, it can be really tough to get out of there. It's definitely a lot of people, a lot of traffic, a lot of students crossing the intersection. Right. Um, and I just noticed that there was a lot of complaining and there was kind of a common theme behind the complaining, which was that intersection. Right. Um, and I'm not really, I guess, the type to just complain about something and then just let it go. Um, so I decided to do something about it Absolutely. so we could all stop our griping. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah. so that something that I decided to do ended up being the rapid rectangular flashing beacon that's there now. Okay, so, okay, so we're coming back because that's a long name for this thing. <laughs> yeah. But basically, it's a blinking light out in front of the high school now. Right. Uh, but um, so tell me about the process, though. How did you get there? I mean, I mean, you and your friends, how did you guys do that? I mean, um, you found that there was a problem. Mm -hmm. Then what did you do? Well, I one day I just decided maybe I should call the Minnesota Department of Transportation about this. All right. <laughs> They're probably a good place to, you know, get approval, get started with everything. Mm -hmm. um, and I had originally proposed a four-way stop there, or some people had mentioned to a stoplight. Yeah. Um, but MnDOT said that that wouldn't be possible um, just because with their like guidelines for signage and everything, it, that intersection didn't fit. Right. Um, and so for that reason, we had to kind of go to plan C. There was a plan C, <laughs> well, okay. Yeah, and um, that was the rap rapid rectangular flashing beacon was that. Um, a rapid rectangular flashing beacon. <laughs> I remember when you first yeah. told me, I was like, oh, it's a what? <laughs> I had to go yeah. Google it and see what it was. Okay. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Yeah. But um, yeah. so then after, you know, they kind of said, like, this is going to be a possibility. Mm -hmm. Once you get approved, this is, you know, has our stamp of approval on it. Um, we had to talk to the, you and the school board. You had to come and talk to me. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I remember that meeting. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then we had to talk to just have like the city engineer um, just kind of say like, yeah, good idea. Good idea. Right. <laughs> and the county and just have them give their thumbs up about it. So um, and then once we got, you know, your approval, the school board's approval, mm -hmm. um, you know, MnDOT, city, county and uh, everyone else's approval. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then uh, it was kind of like just we went for it then and decided to, you know, finalize everything with you and mm -hmm. You Find can, the money. Right, have the money. That was a big thing yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was uh, ten grand or nine grand yeah, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. Nine thousand dollars or mm -hmm. something like that that we yeah. had to find. But again, it became a priority for us because our kids mm -hmm. were crossing the street at risk. Um, right. Uh, cars. I mean, they do a good job as they approach schools, but uh, mm -hmm. but you know, you could see cars flying through that those zones right there, and mm -hmm. it was just going to be a matter of time. Um, that somebody wasn't going to get hurt. And I, I, if I recall right, there was a teacher, I believe, 
a couple blocks down who right. got hit and died. Mm -hmm. I think that's what happened. And, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it, it made sense to me. Mm -hmm. it, you know, we shouldn't put our kids in harm's way. All right, so the big question is, uh, mm -hmm. how's it going? Um, you ain't got, don't lie to the people. <laughs> I mean, tell them, tell them the truth. What's, what's going on? Uh, well, it's not going super well okay. at the moment. Okay. Um, okay. Not a lot of people use it. Okay. Um, there are a lot of people that cross the intersection, like on the wrong side, side. of the street, where there's not the, you know, beacon. I'm not putting there. another beacon on that okay. side. For <laughs> right. Them, so, you okay. need to cross on one side. Okay. okay. Um, and even kids that do cross on the right side, not a lot of action, the signs getting. Um, but hopefully, between this interview and we're actually making a video to kind of pr uh, promote the idea of pressing the button. Right. So hopefully um, between a couple, you know, things that we're doing to get the word out, the button pushing will become more popular. <laughs> so let's talk about who's helping you with the video uh, to get this mm -hmm. out to our kids. Uh, well, the Winona Senior High, like, Tech Nest, I believe they're called. Tech Nest. Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, it's like a group of students overseen by Mr. Graves um, that kind of do all the like cool technology right. things that I know literally nothing about. So Me I either. can't tell you about yeah. exactly what it is. Me I, I understand. <laughs> I know where you're at with that. Um, but they're helping. They have super nice cameras and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and they're helping to make a video, tape a video that we're doing um, to, that's kind of like a fun, entertaining, but also very serious, serious. Yep. way I, of yep. you know getting the word out, encouraging students to press the button. Hopefully, it'll be something that students and community members will you know think back to when they're presented with a rapid rectangular flashing beacon and <laughs> remember <laughs> to press the button. <laughs> You're very funny. Um, I have to tell you, it drives me crazy. Mm -hmm. I, I will tell you because I when I get to that and I watch a kid walk across, right. I literally stop my car mm -hmm. and say, push the button. I know. And they go, okay, next time, Dr. <laughs> yeah. West, next time. I'm like, no, push the button. Go back. Go back and push the button. <laughs> but uh, I, I really have appreciated, this is what is exciting about this mm -hmm. uh, this school, this community, This the kids are, you guys right. are amazing. I mean, mm -hmm. you took that on. And I mean, even when people were saying, no, 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 mm -hmm. you found a, a plan C. And um, and not because it was something for you, but because mm -hmm. you had heard that there's a need and whatnot, and you had the powers that be uh, kind of push forward to say, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember when you presented at the school board, um, that was interesting. You yeah. know? <laughs> and it's, it's always nice when you put that emotion on a school board member to mm -hmm. say, hey, we just don't want somebody to get hit out here. And right. that, in the end, is what we are all about. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, we got a little less than five minutes left in this segment. Anything else out there for you to be doing uh, on behalf of our kids and our community out there? Anything going on for you? Mm, well, I'm not really sure. My time in Winona is kind of ticking down. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> but mm -hmm. um, I think I'm really just hoping to see this project out you know, to the end. Um, see the video come together, hopefully see more students um, yeah. pressing the button. Mm -hmm. um, and if that happens, you know, whether more students press the button or not, I will see it as a victory, I think, just because, you know, um, I guess I did my part. And hopefully, as more students are, you know, made aware of what they're supposed to do, what it's for, mm -hmm. different things like that, uh, they'll be encouraged to press the button and, you know, it'll be more popularly used and the intersection will just become less of a problem. So that's the overall goal. That's the overall goal? <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, so I got to tell you before I close out this segment, I usually let people have one final say. So do you have anything you want to say to Winona as... This will be the last time you probably are on the, sc on the <laughs> screen here. Anything you want to say to Winona? Uh, well, our slogan for the video actually is... Oh, we got a slogan? We do have Look a slogan. Right, yeah. We got a slogan. What's the slogan? <laughs> um, it's make it flash to avoid a crash. So. All right, give me five. Yeah. Give me five. All so right, Winona, yeah. make it flash to avoid the crash. <laughs> <laughs> Who came up with that? Uh, I think my mom did, actually. Your she, mother? How come yeah. we don't have her on the show? Yeah, right? I know. It's clever. <laughs> I wish flash. I could say I did. You, you can't even take credit for that. Make I it can't. flash before you crash. Yeah. Wow. Wow. 
Well done. Thank you. Uh, Winona, <laughs> we are in good hands when people only look at test scores and whatnot. I have to tell you, these are the kind of caliber kids that we have uh, in our system. I'm so very, very proud of you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thanks, Mom, wherever you are. Yeah, thank you very thank much you. for supporting <laughs> us. Uh, that ends our first segment with, uh, with you. And uh, I wish you so much luck at the thank University you. of Minnesota. I can't <laughs> wait to hand you the diploma as you walk across the stage. And uh, to the, the, I can't wait. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, but we'll be back in a moment uh, to the first, second segment of Making a Grade. Thanks, you all. Getting the right look at the right price Perfect. is always in style at Cost Cutters. Located in the professional building in the Winona Mall, 507-454-6030. HBC TV 25 Sports and Lewiston Auto bring you high school hoops. And now it's coming to you in full HD. Over 20 games featuring 10 local schools. Your personal ticket to local high school basketball. Here are the next games covered by the HBC Sports Crew on High School Hoops. For the full schedule, go to hbci.com forward slash sports. High School Hoops on HBC. Brought to you by Lewis Donato. HBC Sports, your home for high school basketball. Perfect. 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 Getting the right look at the right price. Perfect. Is always in style at Cost Cutters. Located in the professional building in the Winona Mall, 507 454 6030. Cost Cutters is your family's full service salon specializing in cuts, colors, and curls. Visit any one of our professional stylists today and get the look you want for less. Welcome back to the second segment here of Making a Great. I'm Stephen West, the superintendent of Winona Area Public Schools. And I must tell you, I have somebody to my left here. Well, first of all, this seems very far away. I like it more I cozy, know, but oh, well, we're doing some, <laughs> some stuff is going on here. Um, but I have next to me Linda Faust Dickert, right? Yes. Okay, I remember it. That took me a long time. I was like, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tear that woman's name up over That's three okay. years. Okay. That's okay. That's how I passed first grade. You spell that, you're good. You're good to go. <laughs> Well, I am so proud that you're here. Um, we're going to spend this segment on uh, you. You've been named Winona Teacher of the Year. Yeah. How are you feeling about all that? Uh, it's a little overwhelming at times because, yeah. quite honestly, I look at the staff I've been able to work with uh, over the last almost 20 years, and I think there have been some incredible people who deserve it, probably far more than I do. And uh, so for me to get that honor, it just intensifies it even more. And, and sometimes I feel like the bar is raised even higher now. Yeah, uh, yeah. We've got more work to do. Well, that tells you, Winona, that and she, she says other people deserve it. That's when you know she's humbled and she deserves it. So uh, how many years have you been teaching and where? Well, my whole career has been here. Uh, oh, like I said, Winona? I know oh, it's like, been almost know. 20 years. And if you count my student teaching, yeah. then it has. Because I student taught at the middle school. Then I got a, a long-term sub. Uh, at the high school for Representative Pulowski when he was uh, still working. Yeah, yeah. Then they hired me full time the next year. So here I am, 20 wow. years later. 20 years later. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about it. You're a social studies teacher. Yes. How does one get into, you know, I'm a former social, I'm always a social studies teacher, but how, how did you decide that was where you wanted to go? Oh, you know, it's not that easy sometimes. I think it found me. Ah. I did not find it because my original degree is in political science. And I minored That's my in, minor? My minor was history and economics. Oh, okay. Right. I know okay. the econ throws people. It but does. that's not a typical yeah. thing. Yeah. And uh, I really thought I wanted to get in like public administration, things like that. Yeah. And really, I went through kind of, I joke, a quarter life crisis, like after college going, all right, nothing seems to fit quite right. I was living up in the cities, and that was okay, it was fine, yeah. but I was kind of missing the balance in life. I had a brother that was much younger than me, 10, 12 years. My sister was a little younger than I was. She had, was getting settled back into the Wabasha Lake City area, and I thought, okay, let's reground myself. I'll go back to Wabasha, and my mom had suggested, why don't you try teaching, and she kind of kept suggesting it, and I kept thinking, well, maybe I could do that. Okay. 
I know, not a good reason. That, I was going to make a job. statement about that. <laughs> Absolutely worst reason to get into education, right? But I enrolled at St. Mary's. They had just started one of their yeah. master's programs, yeah. and it kind of fit what I was looking for. And I had great instructors there. I ended up with Rod Schwartz at the middle school. Yeah. And that was, and actually Bob Ernest too before oh, that, yeah. kind of life-changing moments. Yeah. So I had two of the greatest guys kind of mentoring me from the very beginning right. and continue to do so. Right. Uh, and so I was very, very fortunate there. Oh, it, that's amazing. There are things that you look back and I'm like, okay, maybe I didn't know it, yeah. but the forces of nature yeah. or whatever gotcha. knew it and it brought me to the right place. I agree. I think, I mean, for most of us, it, it, there is something that brings you to it and you, mm. you, you might not know it at the immediate time, but when you get there and you get yourself into it, you go, yeah, this was, this was the right move for us. <laughs> I, I, I've been there. Because all of a sudden five years turns into like 20. And I know, right? You go, I was just a rookie, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I was with Rod Schwartz and next thing I know, I'm a 20 year vet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up right. on the stage getting a 20-year pin or whatnot. <laughs> right. All right, so let's let's talk about teaching. Um, there's a lot of challenges going oh, on with teaching, mm -hmm. and it's only I think it's only going to get harder. Mm -hmm. What what challenges do you see with teachers? I think one of the things is is not understanding the complexity of the job. Right. There's so many things that come to play. I think when you get into teaching, you're thinking about kids and you're thinking about content, and especially the secondary. Like when we're social studies people, it's usually because we love history or we love government. Yeah, yeah. You know, okay, a few of us love econ. Not everybody, but a few. Yeah. I am one of those. I taught few. it. <laughs> and, uh, and you get into that, and you think, okay, that's what it's really about. And then once you get in and step into the job, you realize, oh, okay, one, you've got the complexity of relationship. So you've got a whole bunch of adult lives that you maybe, if you're first stepping into, you're not even much of an adult yourself. Right. And you've got that complexity that you're maybe not prepared for. Right. And the difficulties that some of these kids' lives are and the families that they bring along with them right. in that. And you've got coworkers that you're working with that may be going through things too. A school district that you don't understand what that's about and realizing, oh my gosh, there's budget concerns, there's political issues, there's societal so? issues, just a few. You think there's a few political issues? Just a few <laughs> political issues. You get into all of that, you're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. And, uh, and plus it's, it's you know, the amount of work that you take home, the amount of work that you're doing during the day, and you're not really ready for that. They don't te teach you any of that in college. Right. You can try to explain it. But it's way different than when you I was going to ask you, do you believe our post-secondaries are preparing our teachers for that? Because I agree right. with you. I think they're trying. I had the great fortune to work for St. Mary's for a couple of years yeah. doing some adjunct work. And that was the part that I tried to bring in all the time. And like, right. okay, here's this dose of reality. And I wouldn't tell the I had graduates and undergraduates. I wouldn't tell them that's what I was doing. Mm. And then pretty soon they'd look at me and they'd go like, you're trying to tell us what it's really like. I said, yeah. I said, I'm probably as close as you're going to get to someone who's in the classroom right now. Mm. Then you are. I said, your professors are really good. There's some great people that work yeah. there. But many of them have been separated or maybe haven't even worked in a, in a middle school or high school setting. Right. And now here's, here's the reality of that. So I think they're doing the best they can. Mm -hmm. I think there are some changes and reforms we could do to yeah. make that transition better because right. we're losing too many teachers way too soon. Way too soon. Uh, what our average career expectancy is about five years. Three to five. Yeah. yeah, and that's not good. And I think part of it is they're just not prepared for some of those complexities. Mm -hmm. You get into it, and I think at the, the high school level, or you get into it for a couple of reasons. Sometimes you get in it because you love the kids. I hope you do. A lot speaking of times, speaking truth, speaking truth. There's you get yeah. the content, and yeah. I've told some some of the college students that I've worked with. If you love content, that's great. Mm -hmm. But if you don't love kids, not this is right going to be an awful experience for you, and it's not going to last very long. Go someplace, do some place, something that where you love the content. Go work for a historical society. Mm -hmm. Go do research. Go do something like that. But you've got to remember we're a people business, mm -hmm. and if you don't love kids, right, or don't think you can. Mm -hmm. Speak the truth, Linda. Else. Speak the truth. <laughs> I agree. So since we're talking about these young uh, folks coming in, what would you tell someone interested in it? Okay. Well, I'd tell them the first thing. If you okay. don't love kids, reconsider. That would be the first thing. Uh, you scare really, them right out. Scare them straight. Absolutely. Scared straight. I'll put that right out there. Um, be prepared that the, the human element and relationship is the number one thing that you're going to need to do. Absolutely. The content will come, but it's not going to come unless that relationship is there. Must have it. So you have to have it. And the other thing, and this was advice I was given, I've modified it a little bit, but I call it three years to greatness. Basically, you need to do something three times before you're really good at it. So that first time when you run through, whether it's your first year, the first time you teach a class, 
it's probably not going to go so well. You might look at it and go, it wasn't bad, but it probably wasn't real good. Year two, you fix what didn't go right. By the time you get to year three, you go, okay, I got this. I'm feeling all right. I'm feeling all right. I got this. It's going the way it should be. And if you can do that, I think, and give yourself that space and that time to be great, right. not to be great now, but to work your way to that, you're going to be just fine. She's dropping knowledge on us. We're on a dropping knowledge, Teacher of the Year. <laughs> uh, all right, Linda, so what's next for the Teacher of the Year? Well, I know you uh, got some work to do. I'll now. have some work to do. I'm still okay. kind of waiting for all of the instructions to come in from the state level, but there will be quite a bit of paperwork to get done and building a portfolio. Uh, from what I've understood, it's a pretty intense process. That's what I hear. But a good one, that it gets you to think about your career and your job. And why do you do what you, what you do every day? Why do I get up every morning and go to the high school? You know, it's not to sit around and sit in my chair, you know, and to remember some of those things that we, we sometimes forget about how important and great our job is. So I have this uh, paragraph, Linda, that uh, I'm supposed to read. Okay. Uh, it says here, I'm supposed to ask you how your students and colleagues would describe oh. you. But then... Instead, we thought we would let them tell our viewers and you in a short video created by a couple of our tech minions. Okay. Oh. So how, before we get to the video, or the video is going to run, we can't see it, but the video, I okay. trust them. Okay. What would you think they would say about you? Describe you. You know that that's going to be the question I hate the most. I, uh, that. <laughs> uh, I, would, I would think they would say that I care about them as individuals tremendously. Right. That that comes first. That I love being with them every day. When we can have something good happen, it's pretty fantastic. Mm -hmm. That I work really hard. Um, that I am concerned about their best interests. Yeah. Uh, when I'm dealing with freshmen, I tell them the first time, you know, I promise to be the teacher you need me to be, and I'll figure out what that means. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and I go with that route. So I, I think those are the things that they would take away. I hope they think I'm also understanding and caring, and that I have a good sense of humor. Uh, and that we can problem solve together. So right. if something is coming up, life happens, stuff happens, and we make mistakes, yeah. let's figure it out and figure out a way to make it work. So I don't know you well. I mean, I've, I've come across you right. uh, quite a bit, and I hear what kids say about you. Mm -hmm. um, but the one thing I, I see about you that, mm -hmm. that is clear to me is passion. You know, in this job, as you talked about some of the difficulties in the job, mm -hmm. you can easily be jaded. Mm -hmm. I've not seen that in my three years with you. I don't see a jadedness. I see a person looking. I mean, we all get frustrated about things. Right. Clearly. Right. Um, but I see passion for children. And that, you can't hide that. You know? Y yeah. <laughs> it can't well, be thank hidden. you. Yeah. That's... So that's what I see in you. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and I, that's what makes me proud. You know, I think when Anthony Muhammad was here, mm -hmm. he talked about believers. And mm -hmm. I, you were one of the first faces I thought about, about mm -hmm. being a believer. And yeah. said, I, I'm, we're not going to be perfect here, but I believe in children. And I right. believe in what we're going to try to do for kids. Mm -hmm. And I, I even remember when we were talking about pathways and talking about reach. And I remember you sitting in the media center with a group of folks and Mark Anderson was talking and I, just, I came in a little later and I was sitting across from you and you were talking about it. And I was like, oh my God, she's like, she's, she's ready and hyped. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, I need more of them. Let's go. <laughs> I mean, because that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's teaching them. Right. That's what I saw in myself. Yeah. And it was like, I just yeah. have passion for folks. Yeah. There's always a way, right? And there's always the opportunity to do something better every right? day. And we've got to keep keep that perspective, and I, and I think that's maybe why I've, at this point, been able to, to stay right. positive and focused, because every every chance we get, we get a chance to do something better than we did the day before. Yeah, so. yeah, that's a heck of a statement. I'm so proud that you're well, our Teacher of the Year. Thank I, you. Uh, you represent our, our district. Uh, I hope so. I uh, keep trying every day. No, so. that's, you don't have to hope so. You <laughs> do a great job. All right, so we're towards the end of our segment here. I usually give people a chance to speak to Winona. Uh, anything out there you want to say? I know I put you on the spot. Boy, anything I don't you want know. to say? Hi. <laughs> The rain will turn to snow someday, yes, and, you know, yes. and really, we have a great school district, and thank you for passing the referendum, because yeah. that's very important, yep. and thank you for valuing education here, because we have some great kids. I, whenever I've sat on a number of interview committees, and whenever 
new prospective teachers come in and they ask, what can, what can you tell us? And then repeatedly over and over again, it's not just me, but my colleagues will say it too. We have some of the best kids you could ever come into. Mm -hmm. they, they make it worthwhile. Every morning I come in and I see their smiling faces and I'm glad they're smiling. And even on days when maybe they're not so much, we figure out a way to get through it. I think that's something very important. It's not always about, because people get sour or get sour about test scores and things, but mm -hmm. the creation of a kid is more than that. Mm -hmm. And um, and I see the same. I, yeah. see, I see a group of 1,000 high school kids or 900 middle school or 1,000 elementary, and I sit there and I go, on a just, uh, I don't think people understand, that, well, I know they don't understand <laughs> the complexities of a high school, right. but if you were to just come to our school, mm -hmm. It's one of the quietest places around. I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's not what people think it is. Right. I mean, every now and again, you'll have some some drama, as only a high school can be. Right. But on most days, when I just walk the halls of that high school, I mm -hmm. go, oh "My God, it is quiet." I mean, and, and it's busy, and, and we're getting stuff done. Like a highly mobile high school is supposed to be. So exactly. I'm just so proud of you. I wish you the best of luck. Thank I'll keep you. my fingers crossed. I Thank thought you. Mary Kappa, when she won it, I, I thought she was going to be the, yeah. the state. I, I had a right. shot here. So I'm going to say to you, um, good luck. I Thank hope you. you are the state's uh, representative. You. <laughs> One of our, I, I, yeah. I don't see why you couldn't. Well, I just, thank uh, you. Uh, I'm interested, you. though, what your theme will be and what you're going to focus on. Uh, before I close out, any okay. thoughts? Well, you know it's going to be social studies based. All right. And the, the key focus on building good citizens and good citizenship. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm. Thanks again, Linda, for coming in. Well, and just so, so proud of you. Well thank done. Thank you very much. Uh, again, I would tell you I'm so sitting so far away from them. Usually I'm more <laughs> snuggly than this. But uh, I want to thank everybody for uh, joining us for this episode of Making a Grade. I am so proud to be superintendent here in Winona. These are the types of people, having Tegan here earlier, mm -hmm. having Linda here as my teacher of the year. This is what's really positive. Like uh, Linda said, I want to thank you again for passing both the operating levy and the technology levy. It really has positioned us well. We still have some work around our facilities conversation, which will position us in the future. And I thank this community for allowing us to move forward with that vision. Thanks again, everybody. We'll see you on the next episode of Making a Grade. Have a good one.